Hey everyone, today's podcast, Alex and I are talking about the election. And where do we go from here? Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Growth Network. This is Logan. Hey guys, this is Alex. And today's topic is, at the time of this recording, this is going to come out on Monday, most likely. Um, but the idea is that on this Thursday, we don't know who the winner is yet of this election, right? It looks like it's going to be Biden. Uh, it looks like Nevada is sleeping on counting right yeah. now, but it looks like it's going to be Biden. But regardless of whether it's Trump or it's Biden, we're in this limbo right now. Alex, how much different is your life today than it was on Monday? Man, I woke up the exact same way I woke up on Monday. And, and that's kind of the idea of all this is it's very, very easy to fall victim to our circumstances to say, mm -hmm. well, because of this, this, and this, all my life is way different. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, I saw a post, and this happens every single every election. I saw a post that somebody put out there, and it said, um, "If if Biden wins and he puts his new tax plan in place, everybody in, in my company that voted for him because I have to lay them off should get fired." And it was along the lines of like, when Biden does this, uh, and it's going to mess up all these small businesses you know, everybody who did this, like we're screwed, but this has been the same tale that's told about any Democrat since, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And then the Republican side is anytime a Republican comes in, like, you know, your, our business is going to be amazing. We're going to kill it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter if it's Biden or Trump or this or that. Like if you got to lay people off, it's because you suck as a business owner. It yeah. has nothing to do with who was the president especially like if you're a contractor, you know, maybe if we're talking about like the oil and gas industry, where like one is very pro fossil fuel and one is very pro renewable energy, that makes a little bit of sense. But in this case, nobody listening to this is, is like really in that space, making millions and millions and millions of dollars a year where like all this stuff really affects them. Yeah. It's, it's funny because you have to think how actual little the president probably affects your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. It's really the local government that everyone kind of freezes over during the election time that affects your probably your day to day life even more. So that's kind of what that would that's probably what would make me lose sleep more than actually who's going to be in office. And you're right. If you had to let people off because of, you know, Biden's proposed tax plan, which probably will never get even approved anyway, it's just. Yeah, it's a split know. Congress like it's, you know, and that's why the markets at today are up because they're like, well, Senate's going to stay Republican. The House is going Democratic, but guess what that means? Nothing's going to get passed for two years. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's crazy. It, you're right. If, if you're already talking about laying people off, that means you are go it's going to happen anyway. So whoever is in office, you're leaning towards that direction anyway, and you're not doing your job as an owner, and you're, you need to do a better job of making sure you retain your employees. It's not Biden's fault. It's not Trump's fault. They're, again, scapegoats. Like we talk about every week on this podcast, how they're reflecting that blame on us something new and it doesn't matter who gets elected because you're still gonna lay people off and, and it's but it's very easy to to, to deflect yeah. because now it's no longer your problem it's not no longer your fault it's somebody else's but and we talked about this during like during covid like if if people spent as much time and energy you know being pro-trump vote pro-biden whatever it is pro-mask anti-mask all this stuff if they spent that energy on just growing their business or doing the, the activities that generate revenue, they will be a lot further along. Mm -hmm. But it's so easy to slip back into this pattern of being negative and fighting for shit that is out of our control. Like, yeah. you know, our, our vote between Alex, between you and me, we voted two, two votes between the two of us out of it's like 130 million votes. So mm -hmm. yes, we did our part, but in the grand scheme of things, I can't control the outcome of the election. So why am I going to continue to focus on it versus just, okay, great. It's Thursday. Let's get back after it. Yeah. That, you're hundred percent right. It's, it's funny. Cause when you talk to people, it's like, oh, well my vote canceled. This person's out. So we're good. It's like, when you look at it that way. It's like, it's a, such a small scale to do that. Out of. It's like you, you voted. That's, that's the only thing you can control. You voted, you casted your vote. Now just sit back and watch and evolve. 
it's hey my shirts has evolved it's upside down but that's the that's the word of the week here it's mm-hmm. whoever becomes president you just evolve to the the lifestyle you're going to evolve either way and if you want to stay in that 1990s era with yo the economy was great under whatever reagan clinton whoever it was great under before i was even born you're already you're, that 2050 is as close as 1990 was. I mean, you need mm-hmm. to get with the times. So, yeah, I, I'm over this uh, this hysteria that everyone freaks out about. And but we do this in business as well, where it's so much easier for us to to blame others or to look to to deflect what's really happening, right? Whenever I I talk to like I talked to a contractor maybe like a year ago at this point, and we were talking about a website and he was like, Logan, like I'm asked to justify my prices all the time. I need you to justify your prices. Why is it cost this much? And I I realized at that moment when he said that he's not, he's not mad at me. I just happened to be the, the whipping boy at this time where he just bottled up years of people beating him down on the price and just put it into me. And I, we hear, I heard this in the CSA. There was this guy that used to be in the CSA where whenever he would do a practice role play, he was, oh my God, it was terrible to listen to because he was just like, he was, he, he literally took five years of aggression that he got from his customers and would put it into somebody. And okay, great. You, you feel good about yourself right now, but guess what you just did? Not a single person wants to talk to you in this group mm-hmm. because you just took all this stuff and deflected it into one person. And in business, we do a lot of this where we sabotage ourselves, where we're in this mode of, well, I can't grow. I can't get better. I can't make more money because I don't have enough new leads. Mm-hmm. But in fact, and we're doing this, I mean, and, and this is the mindset I used to kind of be in, but ever since we got uh, Chris, who's like a sales rep, he's going through past leads that maybe I let slip through the cracks or something like that. And he's just calling them up to say, hey, Saw you, you downloaded this, what's going on? And we're, everything's picked back up. So I bet in your business, when the going gets tough, you could very easily say, well, I need to get more new leads. I need to mm-hmm. reach out to new people and do more acquisitions. But with your current customer base, instead of doing what you deem is hard, because you have to do it yourself and reach back out to your current customers, which will actually make you a lot of money because they already know, like, and trust you. We as business owners default back into blaming something else. I don't have enough new customers, so I can't grow. I don't have enough money coming in, so I can't take my family on vacation. But in reality, everything that we have is already in our own grips. Like mm-hmm. you already have past customers, call them back up. If you're a remodeler and somebody remodeled their kitchen, I guarantee you that as soon as you're done with that kitchen, the first thing they're thinking of is, okay, great. What else can I remodel? Yeah. And you have those people in your pipeline, in your database, in your something, but it's easy to not call them up because what if they say, no, we can't handle it because they, we think that they're saying no to us, but they're not. They're saying yeah. no to what it is that we're offering at this time. They're not saying Logan, no, they're saying, no, I don't think what you have to offer, which is different who Logan is as a person and who CGN is as a company, they're different entities. That's why mm-hmm. I'm an LLC. You can sue the company. You can't sue me. So yeah. it, it's, it, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the idea but it, we don't even want to get to that point because we we mix the two together and we just say, well, I need to get 800 leads this year. I need 800 new people this year to make the money that I need to make. When in reality, you may only need 100 because you've already got enough people in your database that you can reach out to and it's golden. Yeah. So do you think that you know most contractors, they deflect because they're afraid of rejection and that's like the number At, one reason? Everybody is a hates rejection. Nobody likes it. Mm-hmm. I, everybody who I talk to that says I'm not afraid of rejection is somebody who has never been rejected. Every single person. And I hear this. Oh yeah. I don't, I'll go knock it on doors. I'll do it. And I'm like, great. Then go fucking do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, well I will. When it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. When what? Yeah. You will when, when what? Because that's what, that's what happens is everybody hates rejection. So what they would rather do is they would rather go out and find new people and quote unquote get rejected by them and then either blame the system or whatever it is, but they don't have a personal relationship with that person. 
It's like you get rejected by somebody you don't know who they are, and it's easier versus a past customer that you call up and they say no because you already have a relationship built up with them and you don't want to quote unquote mess that up, mm-hmm. even though they already bought they bought from you once, they like you, call them back up. But it's very easy to go out and and deflect and say, well, it's somebody else's thing when in reality you have enough at your grasp, at your disposal to make this happen if you want to make it happen. Mm-hmm. You got to get over yourself. And for me, that was tough for me to like calling people up. Like, it, I mean, I'm going to be honest, like it's, it's very easy for me to, to, to like stop doing the things that make money because I'm like, whoa, I got to run the company. Like I don't have time to call up these past people. So I hired a salesman and he's yeah. doing it. He gets paid when he does it. So it's like his, his literal job is to do this. And as a result, he makes money. I make money and the client gets way better and way further along in business and life and whatever it is that they want simply because somebody else kept in and stepped in and said, I want, you know, I, I can help you. And everybody, they want this human connection. They like, we all, we all rely on marketing to do all the heavy, like a hundred percent of the heavy lifting for us. Mm-hmm. Like it can do a lot, but at some point you need to get on the phone and just talk to a human Yeah, and say, Hey, look, I see you downloaded this. You've been kind of looking at our stuff for a while. What's going on? And like, you know what? I'm thinking about remodeling my kitchen. I'm glad you called. That's all I really want. Yeah. It seems so simple to like, just reach out to your past customers or reach out to old leads that didn't work out months ago and, you know, see, see what's the update. It seems so simple. It kind of baffles me that that's not an avenue. That's not the first thing people go to. It's always, they need new, new, exciting, new leads. It's like, are you afraid that you messed it up so bad the first time? Then what's, what's the fear right. of going back the second time? And, you know, yeah, I mean, you've been in that position before. So, I mean, it, it's interesting that it's, it seems like the easiest thing, but why, it, why is it so, the, why is it the hardest thing for business owners and contractors to, to do? Because it's, it's, it's the hard thing to do, even though it's the easiest thing to do. It's the hard thing to do mentally mm-hmm. to, potentially be vulnerable to put the ownership on us versus, you know, just going out and and spending a bunch of money on new things. It's so easy just to go out and and hire a new company and go, well, this didn't work. Well, this didn't work. And it's just like, yeah, but like you, you know, home advisors in a class action lawsuit, Mm -hmm. you know, they are yet when you brought them in, paid them, you know, a few hundred bucks and it got you nothing. You go, well, homeowner, home, home advisor sucks. Yeah. You knew that going into it yet. You see. wanted a reason. <laughs> like you didn't want to actually make this thing happen. You wanted to validate your own conviction around it, that they suck. So a lot of times we do shit to prove, Hey, this can't work. And then at the end of it, we go, yeah, that didn't work. And I wasted all this money because humans inherently love complaining we love to complain about stuff because it's just like what like we talked about this on the last podcast or one of the podcasts before depending on when this one comes out it's like you bond over bad weather more than you bond over good weather because it's just easier you know Mm -hmm. it's just it's it's more bonding to complain about shit so you go out you hire this other company it doesn't work and then you go well they sucked versus doing the little things on your own that will actually move the needle but nobody wants to do the, the hard sex, the hard stuff. It's not sexy. They want yeah. to do the easy stuff that is sexy that may or may not work because it's a gamble. But at the end of the day, you wasted a couple hundred bucks and even worse, you wasted a few weeks that you could have sold another job. Yeah. It's, and it's funny because those situations are the exact situations of why they took that same risk of being going into business and why they left their former company to go start their own business. I mean, for a bunch of other reasons, but the main one is you took, that's a big risk. So with all these little things in the business, it's funny. They don't want to take that risk of calling back past customers or, you know, they, they know home advisor sucks, but they didn't want to take the risk of hiring out to a different marketing company that maybe not as nationally known or something like that. And it, it's kind of funny how, as soon as they take that initial risk, it's now, okay, now it's quite conservative, which in some instances is, is correct, but like you already took the risks. You have that gene, just go with it, go with that feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and as you guys are listening to this, just, just be aware that this is not like, I'm not the master of like 
this. And Al, like, there's even times Alex puts you on the hot seat where I'm like, hey, just call this client. And you're like, mm -hmm. well, I texted him yesterday. And I'm like, just call him up right now. Mm -hmm. And this is it's and, and so we all deal with it and we still all continuously deal with it. So it's not like we are this high top of the soapbox, like, oh, you need to do this and, and we do everything perfectly. Because like again, the only people that say that they're not afraid of rejection are those that have never been rejected before. Yeah. And in fact, they're actually really afraid of rejection, which is why they never put themselves in a situation to become rejected. Yeah. It's that it's that old saying, it's like some people are better at just giving advice and following their own and a lot of times you can analyze things better from just a third person party but when it's in your shoes mm -hmm. you think the same way everybody else does and that's why that's why it we're in we're all in the same boat and we're just looking at it from different experiences yeah i, I think it's uh i think it's sky adams who's uh the one that did he, he created dilbert but i think it's his quote and it's something along the lines of like everybody is so good at solving everyone else's issues to the point where if you came to me with my own issues and you presented it as your own, I would be able to tell you how to solve it like that. Mm -hmm. And we all know it. So think about your issues. If you're listening to this, think about what you could fix. And if somebody else came to you and said, these are my issues, you would most likely have a solution for just about everything that they say. But as soon as it's your own, it's a different ball game. This is, you know, well, it's not because of this. It's because of the president that's in office right now. It's not because of this. It's because, you know, it's bad weather. And I'm now starting like, and I understand there's certain like in the contracting space, like there are seasonal businesses, landscaping, like you can't really dig in the ground when it's frozen, mm -hmm. right? Remodeling, they don't really want you in the house if it's Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? Yeah. But this whole idea of like, it's seasonal, it may be you know, half true with the circumstance, but also half mindset of, well, nobody's buying in the winter time. So let me dial everything back. And because mm -hmm. you dial everything back, nobody knows that you exist. And when nobody mm -hmm. knows that you exist, they can't hire you. So it's the, it's the self-fulfilling prophecy of when you lead into it, you say, well, it's not going to work. And let me prove that it doesn't work. So with the home advisor example, well, it's not going to work because of this, this, and this, and I'm going to waste a bunch of money, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, you go into it with that idea. Like we had a, a sales guy on Monday, one of the guys that uh, uh, we parted ways. And I asked him, I was like, how are you feeling about all this stuff? Like you, you've been here for a month. What do you think? And he was like, you know what? I haven't really given up yet. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to be honest with you. The fact that you said that, you, it seems like you've given up. So we can either wait another week of seeing if this is the right fit, or we can go ahead and rip the bandit off right now. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay. That's fair. And I was like, okay, cool. And that was it. Like, like nice dude, really great. Just didn't, you know, just didn't work out on, you know, both ends. But like when he leaned into like, I'm not having given up on it yet. I was like, yes, you have like yeah. you, you know, you, you just don't want to do the hard thing of saying, yeah, this is not working. Mm -hmm. And we went our separate ways and I'm sure he's way happier. We're good. Like it, it all worked out. Yeah. Odds are, I've learned that odds are you're feeling that gut feeling you get or that, that little voice in your head is right. And just like that, oh, I'm not ready to give up yet. It's because you second guess, you, you overthink it and you're like, okay, you gotta give it another week or so and you no, know, maybe I'll click it. But if it hasn't clicked in the month, mm -hmm. that one week really, what's that gonna really do? If, you're not, if you already think you haven't quit, quit yet, it's like, oh, I, I'm almost there. That's the other way. Then maybe mm -hmm. the week works. But if you're, I haven't, quat, uh, haven't quit yet, quat, I keep wanting to say quat, quit <laughs> yet. <laughs> then yeah, it, it's, yeah, I agree. Just rip that bandaid off. And it happens to a lot of things in life you can apply that to. Yeah. So with the whole, regardless of who's in office, regardless of what the weather is to a certain extent, like, you know, I, I taught, I went to this conference a few weeks ago and we talked about what happened during COVID. And I told him, I said, look, I, I felt bad when I was talking to other business owners who were like telling me about like their horror stories of, yeah, you know, we're, 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 way shut down and we're not making any money in this and that. And when they would ask me how I'm doing, I felt bad saying we're actually growing. We're, we're, we're picking up steam during all of this. So I would say, yeah, you know, we're, we're doing all right. We're holding our own stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is so stupid. And, and when I told the, the, some of the people at this conference, they were like, we're in the same boat. They were a, um, like a, a health company. 
and like a like a you know doctor's office stuff like that all those companies like during covid uh got you know they went down in revenue and they were like yeah we grew big time and i was like why and they said first off logan like with you growing like yes it's it's some circumstance that you're in a online industry mm -hmm. like, but they're also it's it's the mindset going into it like what did you do when covid hit and i was like actually funny enough i called all of all of our clients and said there's never gonna be a better time than right now to do social media you want to talk about adding this on and they're like exactly mm -hmm. that's exactly it so it's not the circumstance logan it's the fact that you did this and they're like with us in our healthcare business we were already thinking telemedicine is the future so the fact that when this thing started, we already had everything in place because we were already forward thinking, knowing what's going on. Yeah. So yes, it's part circumstance, but it's the mindset of, of having somebody who's always forward thinking. And we now see like with restaurants, those that had these delivery services already set up beforehand, mm -hmm. they were good. Yeah. They, I mean, because they're forward thinking, and it's the mindset of like always being on the, the, cutting edge versus the, the companies that took two months to figure out how to set up an online thing. They just lost out on two months of revenue. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Right. It, that's a good way to put it. Cause I, I always thought, you know, Oh, you know, online company, that's always going to thrive, you know, because unless the whole internet in the world crashes, you know, what's going to happen, but you're right. It's the positive thinking. And you look back at my personal life, the, the people that were thinking so negative and were, the, you know, feel sorry for me. I, I got laid off or this, this, and that, you know, they're still struggling and it's nine months later and, you know, the world moves on, the world is moving on. So I like, I'm in the same boat as you. It's natural to feel guilty about it, about, you know, they'll still being employed during all this, but it's, it's, I've always said it, somebody has to come out on the other, on the positive side of this. And a lot of it's mindset. And if you were one of those people that where the feel sorry for me, feel sorry for me. Maybe it's time for a mindset change heading into a new year, you know, because, Hey, if this year isn't to test your abilities as an owner, and as a person, no other year will. So it's, it's a good time to change your mindset because it could be great for you if you do. It, it was great for us. I mean, like for us, yeah. like it, it worked. And I remember we had a business coach uh, about a year ago and I was like, look, man, I was like, Brad, I gotta be honest. It's like, there's all this talk about 2020 and a recession. I was like, like, what do you think is going to happen? He was like, Logan, I don't think anything is going to happen. He's like, even if it happens, he's like, as long as you do the stuff that you need to do, you'll be fine, man. And mm -hmm. then I talked to another business coach afterwards, just like as like a meet and greet thing. And he was like, yeah, all these, all these uh, construction companies, they're screwed. They have no idea what's coming to them. Um, this and that. So it was two very completely different ways. And, and my business coach was more on, um, I loved working with him because he was good for the business stuff, but he was even better for, for Logan and my biology and like, how do I think? What am I eating? Like, just like a holistic view. And like, he's big on like the energy stuff. Um, and then the other guy was very, just like by the numbers, like, I think he was like an accountant and then turned into a business coach. So he was just like looking at like revenue streams and this and that while one is like good vibes and like what you're putting out there, like law of attraction. The other one was like nuts and bolts. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure one, one, like one of them, uh, like the clients of like Brad's people, they're good. Like I know mm -hmm. I, it was a referral from somebody else, um, who was one of my friends here in Charlotte and she's a real estate agent. Well, she's like, I think she's the largest like Keller Williams firm in the country. Wow. Like she absolutely kills it. And it's not because, and, and like, shit every day there's like a new video on like what's going to happen to the real estate market crash and this and that but like she is still crushing it yeah that's awesome so it, it's a mindset thing yeah yeah i think there's two ways of, of some people have to be calculated they have to the numbers and that's how they prep for you know that's how they prepare and all that stuff and then some people that just need that good energy and good vibes i'm personally the good vibes person think positive and positive things will happen but the numbers people interest me a lot because People like, I think Graham Stephan's more that numbers guy, or the big oh, yeah. YouTube guy. Who, who's, who's Graham Stephan? Forever? Graham Stephan's, is, he's a very successful real estate agent for the Oppenheimer Group, but now he has this, uh, this famous YouTube channel. It's two YouTube channels now where he's over a million subscribers on one and you know, a couple hundred thousand on the other. Um, you know, great video. So it talks about basically finance and real estate. Um, but yeah, so I think he's a calculated guy where he's planning for the next real estate crash. He's planning for that. And that's what's going to ease his mind into a positive mindset. 
And that interests me into a way because that's a that I feel like that's a very long way of saying I'm a positive person, but I need to be calculated first. And some people are like that, and that's good. But you gotta be you gotta be disciplined, hard work, and you can't let any outside noise hurt you in that mindset. When if you just think positively and just have, put those good thoughts out there, you wake if that's in five minutes, you just look in the mirror, like we said in the last podcast, look in the mirror and have those affirmations every day. And then yeah. you're good to go for the day. I mean, two different ways can get you there, but there's one way that's going to be a lot quicker and a lot more satisfying, I feel like. Yeah, the, the whole calculated and like timing the market and this and that, like that's almost like you're living your life, like waiting for doomsday to happen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's great. And maybe you, you, you crush it, but I'd rather also have like the two years leading up to it be good days during it. And maybe I don't, I don't absolutely yeah. crush it, but like I'm building, building, building during that time versus like stocking up my toilet paper and stocking up all this cash. And as soon as this market, I'm going to buy the dip and this and that, but yeah, it's great. But you missed the two years leading up to it where the market grew by 70%. So yeah. like, yeah, you got a hundred, you know, 110% from the bounce, but mm-hmm. you missed the first 70% mm-hmm. and you could have, you know, so it's all compounding. So it's just like, that's a tough spot to be in to this whole like plan it out strategic logical numbers this and that it's if you just like change the mindset on like i'm you know to use tom reaver's words i'm a fucking winner yeah. i'm resilient i will make this happen doesn't matter who's in office doesn't matter who's my neighbor doesn't matter any of that shit everything that needs to happen in life it is up to me and it's between you know my two ears yeah and if i can get that shit right all the other circumstances will fall into place. And even if they don't, you'll be a much happier, more sound person, more fulfilled versus, you know, I have to have the stuff and I need to, to buy all the great things to show off to my high school friends who never thought I'd make it that I can be successful. But in reality, like nobody gives a shit. No, because no. you can make, somebody said a quote, it was, you know, I made all these friends in my industry, in my workplace. And then when I retired, none of them have reached out to me. And it's like, so you cared so much for 30 years about what other people in your, in your circle, in your work circle thought of you. And now you're retired and living your life where it's all you and no one really cares. So what's that all worth? Right. What do you, yeah, exactly. What, what do you complain about other people for run your own race? So to wrap all this up, doesn't matter at the time of this recording, it's still up in the air. There's still technically a path for both people to win. But it really doesn't matter. And everybody who's complaining about the, you know, one candidate or the other, it's, you know, it's typically like, oh, my God, Biden's going to have all these taxes. Like, yeah, if you make more than $400,000, then it's a marginal tax bracket. So it's not like all your taxes are like 65%. Like it's, it's not like that. You know, if you're somebody who's making $10 million a year, then you at least have room to talk. But typically, the rich stay rich because they know the tax code, mm-hmm. right? This is how all these, like this Bernie, who's like the most, like, if you think about like, who would you consider quote unquote socialist in America? Bernie, that dude, he has money. Biden mm-hmm. has, like, these people have money. Al Gore mm-hmm. has money. So it's like, yes, you know, they're, they're thinking, like we, we look at this and take it at face value, but it's typically the people that are like, you know, they don't make much money complaining about these tax code things. And it's like, bro, you got to focus on your own shit first. Mm-hmm. You're not even close to, yeah. you know, to, to being at this level. And then yeah. once you do get to this level, guess what? You can hire people that know the tax code for you. This is, this is why I fucking love my accountant, Adine. Because mm-hmm. Adine is amazing at this stuff. Adine focuses on, on um, high earn, like it's like high earning small business owners. And he just goes really deep into this topic. And this is who he can help because he knows all the little loopholes and all the, the gray area and stuff that's like totally legal, but you get to actually pay less in tax. So yes, you're making a lot of money, but guess what? When you get to that point, this is why the rich stay rich. It's not an accident. It's not like they don't spend money. They spend money. They just know how to work the system because they've got there. And once they're there, they're there. So stop focusing on who's going to win the president and get to the point where you actually are able to have a conversation about this because you're in that higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did your part. You voted. Now, whoever wins, you deal with the outcome. And yet, like you said, just get to that point first and then worry about it. You know, you think it's too far ahead. It's not, if you're already there, just wait till the election happens and then find a plan. Everything is planned. Just run your own race. Don't worry about it. 
and we're good. All good, Alex? Yeah, I'm good with this. Cool. Guys, we're picking up steam. What we're doing is it's awesome. Contractorgrowthnetwork.com. Check it out. The shit, it changes lives. CGN.com. There you go.